side of the plate. So that to get it started here in the 2-1-0. Baylor number 24 ranked in the nation. Set to face the Roadrunners here. Last time the Roadrunners beat a ranked opponent in 2015 as they took down number 25 UAB. Umpires for tonight's game behind the plate, Jared Arrington, Matt Johnson at first, and Lyndon Baptiste at third. Glad you could join us college softball tonight on ESPN+. Plus. First pitch a little high, draws ball one. Midweek game here for both teams. Baylor took down Texas Tech over the weekend, took two of three, and Roadrunners succumbed to the East Carolina Pirates. Lost all three of those. So hot ahead of Gilbert here at 2-0. Top of the first inning. Caught the outside corner, moves the count to two balls, one strike. Nice crowd gathered here at Roadrunner Field. 41st meeting between these two teams. Out to right field, no problem for Ledbetter for the first out. That'll bring up Aaliyah Benford, the junior, batting 158. Nine hits and six RBIs on the season. The one down here in the top of the first for the Baylor Bears from the Big 12. Got the inside corner, moves the count to no balls and one strike. I have a special guest in the second inning in the booth will be the new head men's basketball coach for UTSA, Austin Clonch. Look forward to talking to him. He was the assistant at Alabama who was in the Final Four over the weekend and, and gave Connecticut everything they wanted in that semifinal game. So looking forward to that opportunity. So no balls, two strikes, one out here for the Baylor Bears in the top of the first inning. High moves the count to one ball and two strikes. Baylor set to face the Texas Longhorns this weekend. Where's them? Roadrunners will host the play onto the intramural field. Moves the count to one ball, two strikes, one out here in the top of the first. playing straight away in the outfield. Nice breaking pitch for strike three and two up, two down here for UTSA in the top of the first. That'll bring up first baseman, sophomore Abby Flores. Flores with 18 hits, six RBIs on the season, takes strike one. Out to center field, Maddie Hayes with a catch. That'll do it for the top of the first as we move to the bottom of, bottom of the first inning. Baylor three up, three down, ball high, moves the count to one and one. Goyasos at third, Pylon at short, Fran at second, Flores at first, and Lavalley behind the plate for the Baylor Bear. Strike caught the outside corner, moves the count to one ball, two strikes, one out here for the Roadrunners in the bottom of the first.
Down to even at two. One out here for the Roadrunners. Bottom of the first inning. Big 12 versus the American midweek battle here in San Antonio. It's missed the outside corner. The breaking pitch moves the count to two balls and two strikes. One out here. Easy play in right field for Emily Hott, the senior. So two up, two down for UTSA. Then I'll bring up the senior, the catcher, Taylor Jensen. 26 hits on the season to go along with 20 RBIs. So five players retired in a row between these two teams here in the first inning. Nice breaking pitch, catching the outside corner, evens the count at one ball and one strike. Two outs here for the Roadrunners, bottom of the first inning. Back behind us here, moves the count to one ball, two strikes. Roadrunners will host Charlotte Friday night at 6, Saturday at 1, and Sunday at 1 o'clock. We'll have it here for you on ESPN+. Plus. Just high, moves the count to two balls and two strikes. Misses the outside corner. Moves the count to three balls and two strikes. Two outs here for the Roadrunners. The bottom of the first. 92 degrees here at the first pitch. And just outside, Roadrunners draw blood first. First runner on base. That'll bring up designated player Erica Guerrero, the senior. In the dirt, a good stop by LaValle. West, the junior from Liberty, Texas. In the circle for the Baylor Bears here in the bottom of the first. Dopper routine over to first base for the third out, Kylie Forney. And that'll do it for one complete. Big matchup here as they come in this weekend, ranked 24th in the ESPN poll. But a good opportunity for the Roadrunners to be able to play a competitive game and start to build on what we've seen them start to create. They have a little bit of momentum going as far as the way they've been able to execute. And in the pitching circle, have had some really great outings recently. Yeah, and speaking of Glenn Moore, 899 and 457 at Baylor, looking for his 900th man cap at the helm of the Baylor Bear program. When you ask any coach, and they'll take the uh, congratulations for 900, 900 wins, <laughs> but they'll also tell you that means they've been there for a really long time. It has 1,038 all-time victories for head coach Glenn Moore in his 24th season. Be a hit. Now between short and third. Nice start for the Baylor Bears here in the second. And now joined by new head men's basketball coach Austin Clonch. And, and coach, so glad to have you with us today. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. This is great. Coach, 
coach was at the Final Four this weekend. His team was at the Final Four this weekend. Uh, you, you gave me. Of our student athletes, and then, of course, for Alabama, it was their first Final Four. So uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, certainly something uh, we won't forget. Coach, a uh, big press conference coming up Thursday at 3 o'clock to introduce you as a head coach. I know they, they're very anxious to get you here. They've been uh, trying to get you here for a while, but the uh, uh, your team has done so well. Finally here, Coach, and talk a little bit about some of the first things you need to get done with the program. Man, we listen, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, I'm looking forward to sitting down with the guys we have returning. Uh, sitting oh. in, for me, I think the, the, the most important thing is getting in the community, you know, because that's that's going to be a big part. You know, I'm from Texas, uh, you know, I'm Texas proud, and and I'm excited, you know, to get the um, uh, get the community uh, and universities a whole behind this team because everyone's going to play a big part in our success. Baylor now with a runner in scoring position. Any baseball in your past, coach, or softball, or anything you, like that? You know, it's weird. I'm a huge like I love sports, all sports. I'm telling you, baseball was the one. I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't play it. I'd look at the strikes, I'd swing at the balls. I don't know if I was scared of it. I, I, listen, it, it's such a tough sport to play. These these athletes are so skilled. Hitting a baseball, softball is one of the hardest things to do in sports. So, I just, uh, I was pretty nervous up there uh, throwing my first pitch. I just put on Cat Osterman's best strikeouts on YouTube right before I went out there. And <laughs> there you go. It. And uh, you know, hopefully it was okay. They said it was a strike. So there you I, go. I, I, if it's there in the air, it's it's a winner. I windmilled it. I mean, I, I came over the top. <laughs> nice. I, you know, I love so. it. I love it. Coach, we've obviously talked to Coach Van Studeman, who's new here on campus at UTSA as well. Um, talk about the enticement of the excitement around the athletic department. Obviously, Coach Trailer's done a great job with the football program, which has now put eyes here um, on the Roadrunners. But talk about that and what enticed you for this job. Yeah, I mean, everything you just mentioned, Kat, I think is such a big part of what excites me about it. Like I mentioned earlier, being from Texas, I've followed UTSA for a long time. I remember back when they went to the NCAA tournament. And now you look at the, the growth of the athletic department, you know, going from the Southland to Commerce USA, now in the American. Um, this thing's just getting started. And it's, it's an exciting time to be in San Antonio uh, for all these, uh, for all these uh, athletic teams. And I'm looking for men's basketball to kind of keep that trend going and get this thing learning. What should the fans expect? What type of basketball should they look forward to in November? Yeah, look, um, anyone that you, know, if you don't know my background, you know, we, we play very up-tempo. Um, if you watched Alabama, it's, it's very similar in, in regards to how we played offensively. Going to see what you have there, see who's committed, see who wants to move on, things like that. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. And, you know, you know obviously it's uh, this thing called the – transfer portal is, is pretty active right now and sure. look at the end of the day the most important people um I, I say all the time the most most important recruits are the guys on your team uh and i'm excited i, I want guys that want to be here at utsa um and whether that's guys that are here now the guys that are coming in those guys are going to play with an energy and a passion that this school can be proud of. coach we really appreciate your time and look i know you're looking forward to uh your press conference on thursday it, it's a social thing, so everybody's invited out, and uh, I know you're looking forward to meeting oh, the fans. Please, please. I, anyone. You know, I'm excited to meet the student body, the community, the administration, anyone that wants to be a part of this program. I pride myself on running an accessible program. I want people around. I want people who love uh, UTSA and San Antonio, so I look forward to seeing everybody Thursday. Coach, welcome to San Antonio. I appreciate it. Birds up. Austin Klotz, the new head men's basketball coach at UTSA. We appreciate his time here in the booth. And now back to softball, Cat. Had a little bit going on here in the second. Yeah, Baylor threatening runners, two runners in scoring position after a single to left field. Big opportunity here in the second for Baylor to go ahead and push up a couple across. John out in left field had a really solid throw to the plate that did not allow the Baylor Bears to score their cat and she turned she rounded third like she was going to go and I think John had other intentions yeah John did a really good job on a shallow fly ball being able to field it on one hop but did get the throw in on the line UTSA actually didn't have a cut, which if they had a cut, they could have kept the runner off of second as well for UTSA. Obviously not allow the runs. It was able to keep the leadoff runner there at third. Down even at two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the second. Two runners in scoring position for the Baylor Bears.
getting the start today. And the senior really has been the anchor for this staff for the Roadrunners. Got two starts on the weekend as they were out at East Carolina University. Lady LaValle, the senior catcher at the plate for the Baylor Bear. First meeting between these two teams. Last time the Roadrunners have beat a ranked team back in 2015 as they took down number 25, UAB. John there for the third out. Roadrunners get out of a jam here in the top of the second. Nonetheless, the stadium has continued to draw good crowds when the Roadrunners are home. Brenna John, the freshman left fielder at the plate here in the bottom of the second. I blame it all on the solar eclipse. I think it brought the heat. <laughs> well, it was about time, I think. You're getting mid-spring for softball and baseball season. You're expecting some a little warmer weather than anything that you need sleeves and a jacket for. Does the temperature, I know, I know you, you must have pitched in some cooler weather at times. Does that affect the, the pitching at all? No, it doesn't affect your pitch. I mean, really cold weather obviously will affect you the, anyway um, in any outdoor sport. But uh, warm weather, nice. Your body stays loose. Occasionally you might have to wear sleeves as Casey West is to, keep, to soak up sweat or just to keep yourself in a, a little bit of cooler element. You know, all the technology and dry fit tops these days it's supposed to keep you cooler but um, I know I would occasionally have to wear either sleeves or a wristband to, to soak up some of the sweat so it didn't get all the way down into my hand but um, definitely like warmer weather than cold weather full count now on John here bottom of the second inning Baylor with two hits but Roadrunners did not allow a run Left stranded for the Bears in the second. A three and two count on John, the freshman from New York. Brenda John, an athlete that Coach Van Studeman and Jim Bray both very high on, having quality at bats, able to stay in at bats, as we see right now, working a full count, chipping away there until she gets a pitch she can hit. But a feisty athlete that has been able to make the most of her opportunities. Runners back in action Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as they host Charlotte. Baylor set to play your Texas Longhorns this weekend, Kat? Yep, Baylor and Texas going to have a split series at home uh, in Waco on Friday, and then they'll take on the Longhorns Saturday, Sunday in Austin. Is that unusual? No, they've been doing that for a couple years now. Um, so back when the Big 12 had two game series as opposed to three, uh, Baylor Baylor A&M and Tech were always our midweeks. They were midweek series, and so you always did a home and home. Um, with those and obviously tech you didn't usually we made it a double header on a midweek um, but Baylor always had a home and home and so when they went through three game series they just always negotiated that they would split it so there's always one game at one place on Friday and then somebody gets the double header or I mean the, the Saturday Sunday series um, opposing weekends and so last year obviously Friday uh, Baylor was in Austin and Saturday Sunday they went down to Waco Pretty close proximity between Waco and Austin, about 90 miles, I think. So, pretty easy commute for both teams. That's a good drop ball low and in that Britta John unable to lay off of. That would have been ball four had she been able to track that in just a little bit longer. Sophie Campbell, the first baseman, at the plate for the Roadrunners. The one out. None on here in the bottom of the second. Roadrunners trying to get things started. It's the 24-ranked Baylor Bears. And you saw some pretty good softball over the weekend. Your Longhorns taking down the Sooners. Yep, got to be in Austin to watch that one on 
uh, Friday and Saturday nights. We watched Sunday from home, but that was an exciting weekend. Obviously, the U has set the standard for so long uh, in our sport. Everybody's been chasing what, I, what they've been able to create. Texas hadn't won a series against Oklahoma since 2009, so wow. it, was a, it was a monumental moment there in Austin. in here. And we'll have another chance to look at that one. I think the question's going to be if the Valley caught that in the air, if it hit the dirt, home plate umpire definitely heard it tip Campbell's bat, but the question is if it was secured in air or not. And Coach Glenn Moore out there to talk to Jared Arrington. Glenn Moore pleading his case, looking for his 900th win at Baylor, 24 years. You do see a hesitation where she might have re-picked it up from the ground. Is this not a situation where they would go to the monitor? The umpires cannot initiate a review until the sixth inning. I okay. don't know off the top of my head right now if this is actually reviewable for Glenn Moore. Or not. Play made by Walkendorf. Two outs for the Roadrunners here in the bottom of the second. Bring up the shortstop. Junior Cameron Robilov. 17 hits, 15 RBIs. What do you think the message is here? There's two outs and no runners on, so. Well, I think he has a lot of different parts moving. Abby Flores is at first base. You don't see her there a ton. Casey West in the circle as opposed to we've seen her play second short and third for Baylor. Palazzo's usually behind the plate, but as you mentioned today, that's his best third baseman. Uh, but I think just talking probably about a little bit about energy, try to set the tone, but there's no one thing that stands out right now. So he had to have seen something that he's been asking them to do differently in order to call that time out there. And, uh, you know, he has freshman Leah Cran over at second base who just made that last play. And, Pylon is now at shortstop. Well, usually Pylon's at second, and actually Tovin's at shortstop, but Tovin out with an injury now for the rest of the season. And Chalen Govan not suited up for the Baylor Bears today. Chalen Govan, their hottest hitter, hitting over 400. Not as many home runs this year as fans are used to seeing out of her bat, but they're pitching her very carefully, not allowing her to get too many good pitches. Obviously, she is able to adjust with that over 400 batting average. Pylon not able to handle that one, so the Roadrunners with two outs here in the bottom of the second have a runner on. Cameron Robillard Robil Robil has to be able to position herself to keep her glove out in front a little bit on that ball. That better in the eight hole, right fielder, sophomore at the plate for the Roadrunners. A one on two out, bottom of the second inning. Any memories about the Baylor Bears? Um, we played them a lot, obviously. I know we played them around my birthday one time and broke my thumb in the middle of the game. Oh, gosh. Um, we just, you know, taped it up and kept going. So <laughs> it was on my glove hand, so, you know, who needs a glove hand? Right. <laughs> That's pretty much the uh, most vivid memory I have. Uh, just it was a one hopper, and I went to, to field it, and my glove had slipped, obviously, and it popped up and hit me in the thumb, picked it up and threw to first. And a couple of innings later, I was like, this doesn't feel right. And sure enough, it just kind of fractured across the first digit of your thumb there. 
had to mold a little plastic piece to put in the glove for a couple weeks. Made it work. I guess you just expect those types of things to happen, and you just, like you said, you tape it up and you move on. But one on, two out here at the bottom of the second inning for the Roadrunners. Led better at the plate. Even two balls, two strikes. And how important would it be for the Roadrunners to get out in front here against a really good Baylor team? Well, anytime you can score first, you obviously take control of the momentum. And so for the Roadrunners to be able to put runners on and hopefully drive them in, that creates energy for them to feed off of as the game continues. Same time, though, I feel like they should have energy and momentum because they got themselves out of a big situation with runners in scoring position. Yep. As an athlete, you have to you have to be able to celebrate the big things that happen in the game and even the small things. You know, getting the line out to John while it looks like it's just a line out. That's the third out that doesn't allow two runs to score and keep that energy in your favor. Runners left in the scoring position for the Bears in the top of the second. Cats referring to, and John a really good job of getting that ball in, so no runs were allowed to score. So, full count here on Ledbetter. Two outs, one on for the Roadrunners. able to make the play so through two innings no runs here in san antonio you're watching college softball you know, 24 years is a long time the helm of one program well and you start to make a life you know in the community that you're coaching in and if you're successful and it's somewhere where you you're happy your family's happy you're able to live the way you want to as far as you know activities and engagement in the community and things like that. So I know Coach Moore and his family have um, been very engaged in Waco and uh, have made that place home since the day they got there. And, you know, why move on if you've got everything you want? Walkendorf and coming over from right field is Ledbetter to make the catch. One out here in the top of the third. Take the grab. Top of the lineup for the Bears, Emily Hott, the senior at the play, 327, 35 hits, 17 RBI. Playing left field for the Bears tonight. count to one ball and one strike one out here top of the third here's with two hits coming in the second there it is. talking to Glenn Moore and the fact that he's been there 24 years he felt at the beginning of the year that this roster he has now was going to be one of his, if not his strongest team that he was going to put on the field. Unfortunate for them, though, they've dealt with a handful of adverse situations. Obviously, we talked about Tovin going out with a knee injury and two pitchers are out right now. Darian Warm and Lexi Warnicke, both pitchers he's not using so far right now in this part of season. And then obviously Mackenzie Wilson, also her absence. And so he's had to be able to, to move people around, juggle things. But he said he's very proud of the way his athletes have continued to work through the adversity. He said, you know, you look at the scores and yes, you see a little bit of a roller coaster and up and down. But the way they approach the game every day and the way they continue to fight for each other, he's just been very proud. Thought the season would look a little different. He said he would have scheduled a little differently if he had a crystal ball that had told him uh, he would lose some players through the course of the season going to be down the line but out of play so talk a little bit about the philosophy of these midweek games naturally your uh, your pitching is going to be a little bit different because you are looking for the series on the weekend but as far as do you try to get some of your uh, utility players some more playing time during midweek games or do you want to keep your starters fresh or 
No, I mean, your midweek games are games to keep your momentum going, to keep your athletes seeing live pitching, being game situations with, uh, you know, some pressure on. I think the difference in midweeks for softball versus baseball is that your midweek starter can also still start in the series. There's not a five-day rest period they have to go through. Um, so, you know, UTSA will see Jamie Gilbert in the circle come Friday or Saturday. Casey West will see the circle for Baylor this weekend, I'm sure. Speaking of pitching, a big strikeout right there for Jamie Gilbert of Emily Hot. Continuing to expand the outside corner. Of designated player Aliyah Benford, the junior. Second in the lineup for the Bears and Maddie Hayes for the out. That'll do it. Two and a half innings here in San Antonio. Still no score. You're watching college softball on ESPN. No flex. So get this group to fight till the very end. A lot of close games talking to her this week. Prior to the game, she said, you know, even talking with the girls, they've been able to pinpoint things they're better at. But I don't know that hit by pitches is something she's been working on them to get better at. But nonetheless, Kylie Forney, a leadoff hitter here for UTSA. There you go. One on, no outs here in the bottom of the third. But, you know, you just look around at UTSA Athletics, a lot of new blood as far as coaches go throughout a number of the programs. Dr. Lisa Campos, I don't think she's missed with a hire yet. Aaron Aston with women's basketball. And yeah, we saw Coach Clonch. We had the opportunity to visit with him. And her bright future here in the Alamo City. And he hangs up for the Roadrunners. He has the ability to put it out. We've seen it this season. Well, Hayes with three home runs on the year, but two have been in the last two home stands. First pitch against Lamar two weeks ago. Went to right center, and then we saw her also drive one. Well over the left field wall against Memphis. No balls, two strikes, no outs here. In the third. Trying to turn two, but it's going to be too late. And Hayes in a run deck. Wow, pretty impressive. He's able to get under that one, Ken. I can't wait to see that one on replay. Well, Maddie Hayes is not just fast, but she's quick. So her ability to change, get herself out of the pickle. You know, Jalen Pritchard with. Yeah, so hit by Pritchard. So two on, one out. And this kind of just a single in no man's land. Pritchard swinging away. We see her slap quite a bit off the end of the bat, but that just right over Colossus there at third base out of the reach of Pylon. And the three hole Taylor Jensen, the senior, the catcher up for the Roadrunners. One in scoring position, their first of the evening here. Talking to coach, assistant coach Jim Bray today as well and talking about the progress of the Roadrunners offensively. He said they're, he likes the fact that they've drawn a lot of walks there in the top 25 in the country in walks. But he said the walks don't score the run. So we're also trying to talk with as much as we like that you're passing the bat, we need someone to drive in. So we need to be aggressive when the pitches are over the plate. Saw Jalen Pritchard first pitch there attacking something over the plate, trying to make some action and getting... UTSA, their first runner in scoring position. First hit of the game as well. And the Roadrunners on the board first here in San Antonio. If Grant at second base, there for Baylor wasn't able to make the play. Well, this, just a slow roller all the way around from second. Maybe we'll have a chance to see that again. 
as the runner was coming right in front of her. I'm wondering if that was a distraction at all, if, if she looked up for a brief second and then lost, well, I think lost she sight was of the ball. Looking up to make sure she made a play at first. I think she knew she didn't, with the speed of that ball, she didn't really have a play at second there. So two on, one out, one already in for the Roadrunners here in the bottom of the third inning. 24, 24th ranked Baylor Bears here in San Antonio. Four hole is Erica Guerrero, the senior. Uh, the senior struggled a little bit the last time, or excuse me, two time, two home stands ago when UTSA was home. The coaching staff thought she was a good matchup in East Carolina with Apple, and sure enough, it paid off. She went three for three. Being rewarded for her offensive progress here with another start tonight. But at the beginning of season, she was an athlete that Coach Van Studeman thought offensively could have a breakout year. Hoping here in the last half of season that they can get her going into conference tournament. Down the line will be out of play. Yeah, will remain at one ball, two strikes, one out here. Road runners, one runner in scoring position, two on the base pass to the bottom of the third. Series have Texas State coming up, and that's someone who Baylor's very familiar with. Texas State beat them 6 1. Texas State, a great program. And Kat, I know you spent some time coaching for Texas State, and they're a, they're a top 25 team. Yeah, Coach Ricky Woodard over there has her program on a hot pace right now 32 wins already in April, the beginning of April. Ranked number thir well, 13th in the RPI, 25th in the ESPN poll, breaking into that this week. But UTSA will host them next Wednesday. This went tomorrow, actually. Texas State will head to Austin. So these four programs all playing each other within a two week span. Full count three and two. One out here, bottom of the third. Roadrunners already with one run in, two on the base pass. Great job by Guerrero not to be chasing out of the zone to work herself back into a full count. And the base is now loaded for the Roadrunners here. That's a big at bat for Guerrero. Early in season, she would get behind in the count and she would go ahead and continue for UTSA. Pinch runner for UTSA, Sydney McReynolds. Place on second base. So the bases are loaded for UTSA. Bottom of the third, one run already in, and the freshman, Brenna John. Big opportunity here for the freshman to not just break this open, but get herself. Crucial base hit against high quality competition. The force play at home in time and the throw to third. Not in time, so great job by the Baylor defense that time. Pylon getting it to home plate for the second out. The base is still loaded for the Roadrunners. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. UTSA up one nothing. Sophie Campbell, the first baseman up for UTSA. First pitch outside. And if you're Casey West. Well, obviously you're gonna continue to throw strikes. You're doing your job right now. The one run that's in is unearned. Been able to 
make the Roadrunners miss hit quite a few balls. None of them have been extremely hard off the bat other than the single to, uh, to Pylon in the second inning off of Robillard's bat. Shin shot. Shin? Shin shots ah. never feel very good. So, but that's where you see the adjustment. Bullet foul over and over. That's the end game adjustments that Coach Bray and you see Coach Tori Smith there in the opening of the dugout are continuing to work on with this Roadrunner team. Out of play. Count will remain one ball and two strikes. E.C. West, the junior out of Liberty, Texas, has the most saves on this team with three, but in the starting role today. E.C. play for West, so bases remain loaded, but the Roadrunner is able to score and have the lead here, one nothing after three. That that's going to be Abby Flores, rather. Sophomore from Beaumont, Texas. Sophomore academically, actually a redshirt freshman. Didn't play last year as a freshman. Had a little bit of back injury that kept her out. 305 on the season, 18 hits and six RBI. John out there in left field. Have to move a whole lot on that one. One down for the Bears in the fourth. Sydney Sydney Cuyasos. The four hole, the senior. 253. 23 hits and 10 RBIs. Ledbetter coming all the way over from right field for the second out. So two up, two out for the Baylor Bears in the top of the fourth. And is Gilbert doing anything special there? She's getting a lot of pop-outs, or pop-ups, rather. Well, as mentioned earlier, she spins it side to side, screw ball, curve ball, so that's all up spin. So she's been able to dial it back actually a little bit this year. That's something Coach Van Studeman had her do. She's used to being a hard thrower. A lot of times just tried to throw it by people, but it flattened her pitch out. So tried to pull back just a little bit, spin it a little more. And that has allowed her to get a lot of fly balls, especially off that curve ball, which is into lefties, away to righties. And a lot of times you see that. That's the high high percentage of fly balls comes from being able to be an upspin pitcher and spinning it tight enough that off the bat it's not able to shoot straight out and get under it and it spins up. No problem for Pritchard. For the third out, halfway through the fourth inning of play, still Roadrunners one, Baylor nothing. 15, Sydney Cuyasos. Cuyasos. Third baseman for Baylor, number 27, Shannon. Cuyasos set the move to second for the Bears here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Bottom of the fourth inning, leading off for UTSA, 21, Cameron Riddler. Riddler, the junior from Cedar Park, Texas. Nice move, Jim. <laughs> well, Baylor shifting their defense around. Obviously, freshman Leah Cran made the costly error in the third inning that allowed UTSA to score their run. As I mentioned, Coach Glenn Moore has. Had a standard of excellence at Baylor for a long time, and he's not afraid to make shifts if your play or your focus is not up to par. And 
He also has the ability with a deep roster usually to be able to move people around. Baylor will be out of play down the left field line. Baylor's nothing short of athletic. If you're ever talking about athletic teams in the sport of softball, Baylor is always in that conversation. Usually their stolen base numbers are, are way up there. He's not afraid to run and usually has athletes that can play multiple positions. Just outside, evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. In the bottom of the fourth inning, Roadrunners won. Baylor nothing. Seventeen hits on the season to go along with fifteen RBIs. Forty-first meeting between these two teams, and Rubelard able to draw a walk here to start off the bottom of the fourth for the Roadrunners. So last two innings, Cat, Roadrunners able to get on runners early in the inning. The eighth hole, right fielder, sophomore, Caton Ledbetter. You have to give it to the Roadrunners. They are making Casey West work. That's the third walk, fourth free pass when you count in the hit by pitch so far in this game, and we're just in the fourth inning. Field in tight, hoping to make a double play out of this. A count even at one ball, one strike here in the bottom of the fourth. Runners with one run and one hit in this one. Casey West going upstairs twice, probably assuming that this might be a bunt situation for the Roadrunners. A lot of times you'll see teams go ahead and sacrifice, play station to station softball. I better not show a bunt here in this at bat. The Valley hit that foul ball. Well, all that padding that catchers wear, and a lot of times foul balls will either get them in the toes or right around the knee. Waiting her. Looks like she's going to be able to continue. Those catchers are tough. I know pitchers are tough, Cat, but those catchers. No, catchers are a, a different breed <laughs> of tough, man. <laughs> they get beat up back there, whether it's a foul ball, a pitcher short hopping you. Throws to the plate, get slid into, you name it. They get uh, they get beat up, so you always got to take care of your catchers. <laughs> Just outside, there's a count to full here. Roadrunners with one base runner on here to start the inning. Looking to make things happen here in the fourth. putting up a good fight here against Baylor, obviously winning, but just watching their at-bats, a lot of long at-bats, doing a good job of chasing, or excuse me, swinging at pitches in the strike zone. It'll be out of play. And that's something that uh, Coach Van had talked about, the patience of this team, and that's something you've talked about over the time we've spent together, how much more patient the Roadrunners have been at that plate. That better 
to doing to foul off that inside pitch. But this is where Coach Jim Bray wants to see the in-game adjustments. He wants to see them be able to start to connect with that pitch to where they're not just pulling it foul. They're driving it in between the white lines hard. So for the Roadrunners, it's about figuring out their timing and how to attack pitches a little differently after they've seen quite a few of them in the same place. And one out now for the Roadrunners. That'll bring up the nine hole, Kylie Forney, the sophomore third baseman. Being overly aggressive with two strikes. One on, one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Roadrunners up one nothing over the Baylor Bears. strikes. Forney trying to show sneaky butt there, see if she can work her way on with Abby Flores playing back over there at first base. A little bit of new life with Lavallee not knowing which way the ball went off the bat. Side moves the count to one ball, two strikes, one out here for the Roadrunners. Bottom of the fourth inning. I think that one might have been a little bit of a pitch out the way Lavalle got up quickly, thinking that maybe Robillard might have been on the move. Back to first, not in time, and two players collide. At first base. Hopefully she's going to be okay. Well, Colossos has just moved over to second base, and she was coming to see if she needed to cover the bag as Abby Flores made the throw to first. But she does get into the baseline. Bottom of the four, so one runner on, two outs. <laughs> up the top of the order. Sophomore center fielder Maddie Hayes. Hayes down the left field line. The diving catch is made by Emily Hott. We'll do it for the Roadrunners in the bottom of the four. Score remains Roadrunners one. On two hits, Roadrunners one run on one hit. Moving into the top of the fifth inning. John able to make that play. So back to back defensive plays, one by the Roadrunners and one by the Bears. Well, this a great ball off the bat of Presley Pylon in the gap. Brenna John. Baylor Strain, the senior right fielder, up for the Baylor Bears. One up. One out here for the Bears. Two pitches, two balls. One strike, one out here for the Baylor Bears in the top of the fifth, trying to get on the board here. The last day it looked like the wind had picked up, Cat, but now it's kind of died down again. Checking out the flags in center field. Let's call them and you see a lot of these fly balls. They're not carrying, so both teams are going to have to 
put a charge into it if it's going to get out of here. It feels a little thick outside, a little bit humid. And through the legs of Campbell and Baylor getting things started here in the fifth inning. The senior catcher up for the Bears in the eight hole. Oh, Baylor getting things started here in the top of the fifth inning, one on, one out. Everyday player for Baylor, but back there behind home plate today, giving Colossos an opportunity to be in the field, take a little pressure off her legs, the squat. And there we go, and not able to make the play. And, and Jensen, one of the best, she is the best in the American uh, as far as catching runners go. Their speedsters on base, he's not afraid to push the envelope, and you see that there, even though. Taylor Jensen has good numbers and a good arm. Baylor with a running and scoring position for the first time since the second inning when they left two stranded on second and third, respectively. A count even two balls, two strikes, one out here in the top of the fifth. Side moves the count to full. Well, after a great play in left field by Brenna John, Jamie Gilbert should be controlling these at bats instead, falling behind hitters, allowing Baylor to see a lot of pitches right now as they're completing their second time through the order. Runner will advance to third, play made at first base for the second out. Richard over to Campbell. So two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Baylor for the Bears, but still a second out, an important second out for UTSA. Ashlyn Walkendorf, one of the best hitters on the team, 357 average in the nine hole. And if you're the Roadrunners, you definitely don't want to get to the top of the order. said a lot Kent this year that some of the better hitters now are in the nine hole they I don't know if they just feel more comfortable there or well in this case Watchendorf is not an everyday player she only has 28 bats on the 28 at bats on the year she primarily was a runner early in her career she's been able to fill in in the outfield this year when they've needed her to and now they need her to be an everyday player and she's making the most of that opportunity and there you see an RBI single Joe Pritchard not able to make the play at second base, and the Baylor Bears have now tied things up at one in the top of the fifth. One on two outs here for the Bears. One run already through. Trying to add to their tally here in the fifth inning. Gilbert was allowing a lot of pop flies and now they're hitting the ball and it seems like uh, getting it keeping it on the ground now cat and is that anything with what Gilbert is doing out there in the circle or well Baylor's making adjustments and at the same time Gilbert's starting to throw a lot more pitches Baylor was being aggressive early in the count she's not throwing strikes now early in the count so they're not chasing One ball, two strikes, two outs here for the Bears in the top of the fifth. Things all tied at one. Dismiss the corner, moves the count to even at two balls and two strikes. Play 
made by Gilbert for the third out. So we'll move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Baylor on the board. Things all tied at one. You're watching college softball on ESPN+. Plus. Hit into center field. Roadrunners, third inning in a row where the first batter has gotten two base. And well, this little jam job off of Jalen Pritchard's bat, but it finds no man's land there in center field. Watching Dorf coming in hard, but Jalen Pritchard leadoff single. Second hit of the evening for the Roadrunners. Jensen in the three hole, the catcher. Coach Glenmore going to go ahead and make a pitching change here. Riley Crandall coming in for Casey West. Pitching change here for the Baylor Bears. We'll step aside. And when we come back, we'll have the Roadrunners in the bottom of the pit. The circle for Baylor, 2.2 ERA, 10 and 5 record on the season in 22 appearances. Two strikeouts on the season, Cat. Well, Crandall, a sophomore, she has shown some absolutely brilliant and dominant outings. Coach Glenmore talking about the consistency, though, and that's what he wants to see is consistent outings day after day from his pitching staff, especially the young sophomore. You know, a couple times last year, there were points in the game where too many free passes or too many balls. He subbed her out very quickly and was like, nope, here's how it's going to work. We're going to attack the strike zone. We're going to consistently attack the strike zone or you're not going to continue to get the opportunities. And she's been able to rise to the occasion. Taylor Jensen at the plate for the Roadrunners here in the bottom of the fifth. Two balls, one strike here. Roadrunners one on, no outs. Crandall going to throw harder than Casey West, and you see there a little bit more of a rise ball is trying to go out of the zone here to Taylor Jensen, see if she can get her to chase, but Jensen able to lay off that pitch. Good patience by Taylor Jensen. Outside, now two roadrunners on, no outs here. In the bottom of the fifth, that'll bring up Erica Guerrero. Crandall trying to use the base runners for the road runners. Speaking of Guerrero, she had a great eye last time she was up. She drew a, a walk. But she swings at the first pitch here in the bottom of the fifth. Randall trying to find the strike zone for the Bears. Well, and it's always interesting trying to figure out uh, what a hitting coach's philosophy is. Taylor Jensen just walked on essentially not, not four pitches, but five pitches. So only one was a strike. And Erica Guerrero going in against a brand new pitcher who you haven't seen yet. And we go swing at the first pitch when you don't really have timing down. You haven't seen what she offers. But at the same time, it was a strike over the plate. So it's, do you want to get timing or do you want to see them be aggressive on things over the plate? For it to be over the plate, that's... Almost a collision there, but able to avoid it. Boris comes all the way over from first base on that. And and Cat with runner in scoring position. Taylor Jensen earlier, wondering if they 
didn't re-enter her until now, and Coach Studeman caught it and re-entered her real quick before Baylor did, or vice versa. Baylor had a substitution that they hadn't entered. I would, I'm going to guess they hadn't re-entered Taylor Jensen, and Coach Studeman quickly got it in there before. So John ahead of the count, 3-0. One ball away from loading these bases up in the bottom of the fifth inning. Ball four. Things all loaded up here for the Roadrunners. Bottom of the fifth inning trying to break the stalemate at one. Grants for UTSA. New batter for UTSA. Coming to the plate, number 10, Madison Linton. Pitch hitter for the Roadrunners, Madison Linton, the sophomore. Stepping to the plate with bases loaded in the bottom of the fifth. One out for UTSA. on the year, but has taken three walks in her 59 at bats. Might be a matchup situation. She may lay off the rise ball better than Campbell or hit a curveball a little bit better, knowing that's what Crandall's going with to these right-handed hitters. Out of play moves the count to even at one ball and one strike. Ball back to back there. Play force play made at home. Richard called out at home plate, so two outs. Base is still loaded for UTSA. It's two bases loaded ground balls. Pylon's been able to get the easy force out at home. However, that low throw took away any opportunity for LaValle to try to possibly turn a double play. And the first two pitches to Robillard are balls. Nowhere for this runner to go. Two balls, no strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Runners with the bases loaded. Good take by Robillard. Being ahead in the count. Don't want to chase anything unless you feel like you can square it up. And again, first time the bottom of the order is seeing Crandall for UTSA. He popped up. And the play is made. Roadrunners not able to capitalize. Bases were loaded. Three stranded here in the fifth. We'll move to the top of the sixth. No flex zone. No flex zone. They know better. They know better. Wanna go? Saturday presents round one. Itchy Allergy Eyes versus Sweet Wacker God, the undisputed champion of her. With only six at bats on the year. Put in place of Aaliyah Benford, though, who has just recently been cleared to get back in the box and hit for herself, so Coach Glenn Moore could be also taking it easy after she was able to get two bats, or two at bats here in this game. Erica Guerrero now at first base for the Roadrunners. Down three balls, no strikes. That 
strike. But a girl was trying to make her way to first. And not so fast. by Gilbert to go again into that inside corner. Gilbert was down three balls, no strikes, and fought her way back into this. Top of the sixth inning, things all tied at one. And Whitaker aboard for the Bears here in the sixth. Commanding the zone and getting behind at 3 0 in the first three pitches allows Whitaker to be comfortable in there. And Whitaker easily able to make her way down to first. Pitch runner, Sydney Bardwell, the freshman. The one on no outs here. Baylor trying to get things going here at the top of the sixth. Strikes and hey, Jim, you know the old show that they be tricking they tell her. Coach is putting on the Roadrunner hat and not sure what that's about, but nonetheless, <laughs> I think Coach Van Studeman's trying to find every which way to get them to loosen up and play a little bit more freely. She feels like there are times where. They just get way too tense, and then they let the game get away from them. And so, I think she said she's tried to she's tried to occasionally go out there and tell jokes. She's tried to talk about where they might eat after the game, and they all still stay tense. So I think um, the hat might have been a way to get them all to uh, relax and just laugh a little bit. And I think it worked. <laughs> strikes, no outs here. One on for the Bears in the top of the sixth. Lines that one out toward the Roadrunner bullpen. A little action going on over there. A couple arms getting loose. See Kendi Schultz. Camacho. Outside moves the count to two balls and one strike. The hitter's getting ahead of Gilbert here in the sixth. Out of way, evens the count, two balls and two strikes. for seven innings. Neil Raphael along with the All-American and three-time Olympian Kat Osterman. There's John again. So the first out of the inning for the Bears. To Kansas during their Big 12 play, and he said, we left there, I thought it might have been the best offensive performance we've had. We just hit a lot of right ads. Didn't get things to fall, but squared up a lot of balls. Said the unfortunate part was we left 0-3. Similar tonight, a lot of hard hit balls have just been right at the outfielders for UTSA. Deniku Yas, Sos at the plate. Side evens the count. One ball, one strike. One on for the Bears here in the top of the sixth. Runner able to advance. Force play meet at first. So the Bears now with a runner in scoring position. That is Sidney Bardwell. 
the pinch runner. So two outs, one in scoring position for the Bears. And that is Caroline Rowett. As Vavoda steps in for her first at bat. Vavoda, junior from Pueblo, Colorado, to Pima Community College. So one on, two outs. One runner in scoring position for the Bears here in the top of the sixth. Gilbert ahead here on Vavoda. Yeah, Vavoda coming out hacking, trying to make something happen against Gilbert. As we mentioned, that runner is in scoring position. Coach Glenn Moore talked highly of Vavoda, as you mentioned, coming over from Pima Community College. He says it has taken her a little bit to adjust to the pitching at this Division I level, but he is excited about the power she can bring. Gilbert up 0-2. Definitely did not get Vovoda anything to look at there. Ball two strikes, two outs here for the Bears in the top of the sixth. a pretty off-speed pitch by Gilbert. We don't see that pitch out of her a whole lot, but well located, low and outside. Have to wonder how Vivoda laid off of that one, thinking that's a good, good out of hand. Now the way count remains at two balls and two strikes. Geico makes car insurance easy. The sixth inning here for the Roadrunners. Things still tied at one. Ledbetter at the plate for UTSA. Right fielder. 29 on the season. Eight hits and three RBI. First out. For UTSA, play made by Pylon over to Flores. That was a great play by Presley Pylon deep in the hole. Coach Glenn Moore talks about he thinks she is one of the best middle infielders that he has ever coached, and he has coached a lot of good middle infielders, let me tell you. So that is high praise for Presley Pylon, and she makes the transition from second to shortstop right now look effortless. And a base hit. In the nine hole for Kylie Forney. And a one out base runner for the Roadrunners. Solid base hit for the redshirt freshman. Top of the order for the Roadrunners, Maddie Hayes. Now ball for strike one. So one on, one out here. Bottom of the six. This game slated for seven innings. Strike one out here for the Roadrunners, bottom of the sixth. Baylor trying to exploit the inside corner. Maddie Hayes on the plate quite a bit. Saw Casey West try to go in there, and now Crandall also utilizing her screwball in the inner half. Ball two strikes. And two strikes. 
Good, by, good job by Hayes not to expand the zone. Six row runners and to break this stalemate. Another good hold by Matty Hayes there as Crandall goes up and out in the outer half of the plate. Last foul ball Hayes had was an off speed pitch. She was able to waste it. there just with Hayes initial movement and her shoulders going the barrel of the bat comes just into play as that ball comes up and in wasn't really offering at that but Crandall able to find the bat so that's not ball four so two out for the road runners here in the bottom of the six Seeing the ball well tonight, two for three. Her one out on line drive to left field, so it's been able to make some things happen and square the ball up in all three at bats. Yeah, solid weekend for Pritchard. Batting at 417, five of 12 over the weekend, had a double score, two runs for the Roadrunners. Fortunately, they were not able to come away with a win. The opener 6 1, then 10 2 in six innings, and then a tough one on Sunday, lost 4 to 3. Baylor able to take 2 of 3 from the Texas Tech Red Raiders. the count two outs here in the bottom of the six runners with one on She's doing a good job here in her first at bat against Crandall fighting off some pitches just got under one a little bit that could have possibly sent to to the gap. Baylor outfield has speed, but they are playing in, so if Pritchard has a power slap that could get into the gap, it could let Forney run and possibly score from first. It's handled, and runners are able to advance off the glove of Riley Crandall. It's in the heart of the Roadrunner lineup here. Two outs here in the bottom of the six. Roadrunners trying to get the potential winning run across the plate here. So two on, two out. Jensen was the first hitter that Riley Crandall came in to face. She did walk the senior. Senior Jensen ready to do some damage with that first pitch swing, knowing Crandall's probably going to go to the outer half. Batting 260, 26 hits, 20 RBIs. Two balls, one strike now. Two outs here in the sixth. Two runners with one runner in scoring position. Two balls and two 
strike. Well, UTSA has been excited with the corner that Taylor Jensen really has turned. The senior has been having consistent quality at bats for them, game in, game in and game out right now. We need to have one here. Strike three, and that'll do it for six full innings of play from San Antonio. Back where we started, Baylor one, UTSA one. The pylon, the six hole for Baylor to lead off the seventh inning. Pylon, another lefty with some speed. She can use a little bit of short game. She can slap sometimes, but... If she gets on as a leadoff base runner, it could be dangerous for UTSA. Coach Moore will put her in motion with Taylor Stream behind her, who's able to control the bat, the bat head and just put the ball in play just to make, make some action happen. Count even at one here in the top of the seventh. Jensen just not able to get there, so lose the count to one ball and two strikes. What are you first meeting between these two teams? Seventh hole, right fielder, senior batting 300, 27 hits and six RBIs. One down here in the top of the seventh. Baylor trying to get on the board. Down even at one ball and one strike. Lightning here lighting up the sky and... <laughs> Good, good take by Strain, though. Not a pitch that's easily hittable. Wasn't over the plate. There you see the clouds off in the distance. Down even, two balls, two strikes here, top of the seventh. Only seven hits in this entire ball game. Two runs scored. find its way into center field and Baylor has one aboard here with one out. It's going to bring up LaValle. Well, this pitch in the exact same hit. So Zadie LaValle, the senior catcher for Baylor. One on one out. UTSA and they need to have great communication in the infield. Looks like Robillard's going to cover the bag, but Taylor, or excuse me, Jamie Gilbert going to have to make sure she pitches accordingly because Robillard is shifted over towards the bag knowing that the speed Baylor has. So she can't allow LaValle to poke something through the 5-6 hole because it is significantly wider than usual. Even one ball, one strike, one out here, one on for the Bears. Trying to rally here in the seventh. I and now the zone moves the count to two balls and one strike. If you're Gilbert, what are you thinking here? Well, obviously, you have to challenge with a strike. You're having to continue to still pound the zone against this Baylor offense. They haven't hit you incredibly hard. 
And the play at second. I'm gonna say she's safe. Get the hand before Strain got the bag. First I thought Strain got around that tag, but that look right there looked like when it got her glove, or excuse me, her hand right before it got to the back. And this is a crucial juncture here in this ball game, so great job by Coach Van of asking for the monitor here. It's over. It's right here. Strain is on the back side of the bag. She get that left hand in. <laughs> she might get that left forearm right before those fingers are on the base. Right there. To me, it looks like there's contact made. The question is, is it conclusive enough to see that there's contact? I have to have enough to overturn this one. And it's close, but... Richard's right there on the call, making the call out. There, so. <laughs> yeah, she's just assisting the, the umpire there. So, but Lyndon Baptiste right there, but at the same time, the front part of the bag, not necessarily the easiest for him to view. But good job by Robillard to handle the one hop. Initial indication is safe. So. I'm Van Studeman. I want that review too with how close that is. Two hours later. That's going to be a tough one. It is. The question is if you can tell if she, if the glove touches the forearm or not because there's contact right there. It's before she hits the bag. And I think there is, by the way, her glove is bending. Ah, we'll here see they come. What they see. Crucial call. After official review, the base runner is safe. Yeah, okay, it looks like that could have gone either way. And it had sufficient evidence to overturn that one. So, Baylor, the runner in scoring position, one out here in the top of the seventh. You want to review that in case camera angles show different, but as I said, while it looked like there could have been a tag before her hand touched the bag, you also don't know definitively if there is a tag. And that's why the original call is so crucial. That one's fouled back. And the second out by Jensen. By Gilbert of getting out there. Taylor Jensen has not all of a sudden become a pitcher. The key here is Ashlyn Washtendorf has the RBI for Baylor. He does. Solid single in the 3 4 hole, although you do see Jayla Pritchard. Jalen Pritchard shifted over now in this at bat. It's the bat. On Wachendorf. There's John picking it up. Not going to make the play at first or at home. And the Bears on top 2 1 here in the seventh. Were you kind of surprised she didn't go for it, or? Well, I'm not sure that she had a play on it. She was shifted a little bit more up the middle, but play, that was an elevated off-speed pitch, and Walkendorf drove that to left field, and because John was playing over towards the line, didn't have the angle to come in and make a great throw home. And Walkendorf with two crucial RBIs in this one, and Baylor now on top 2-1. 
here in the seventh. Down even on hot. And the runner's going to go. They're going to call that one out. So that'll do it. But the damage was done in the top of the seventh. Baylor able to come away with a of the seventh. What's up, guys? What I'm about to show you is going to change the way you shave your head forever. You can shave your head in 90 seconds or less. With no cuts or nicks. It's 100% waterproof. It even works in the shower. Introducing Remington's Balder Boss, the cordless head shaver with five dual track floating head design. Get over 60. Guerrero in the four hole leading things off for the Roadrunners. In with a lead now. Baylor Bears three outs away from a victory here in San Antonio. That one hit down the right field line for out number one. Taylor Strain under that one. That'll bring up the freshman out of Scotia, New York, Brenna John. Quick out by Guerrero there when UTSA needs base runners. You'd like to see a little bit more patience as the leadoff hitter in this inning for UTSA. Speaking of patience, Brennan John wants that one, but it was a strike. John just pressing a little bit. They've done a great job of not chasing balls out of the zone. That rise ball means something John elevated, trying to do a little bit too much. Pylon under that one for the second out. Roadrunners down to their final out. One Baylor here in the seventh. for the Roadrunners here in the bottom of the seven. Out of the way, the ball's two strikes here. Now you see UTSA just pressing, taking strike one and letting Crandall elevate, getting strike two swinging, something they weren't doing earlier in the game. To continue to make sure you swing at pitches in the strike zone. Don't increase your odds of getting on base or getting a base hit by chasing outside that strike zone. Two strikes, two outs here. Roadrunners down to their final out. Baylor up 2-1 here in the bottom of the seventh. and two strikes. A 
Okay. Lynn Moore looking for his 900th career win at Baylor in 24 years. Just outside and Linton hanging in there. UTSA went down to what could be their last pitch. On the flip side with Baylor, you're asking Crandall, is Pump going to strike? Don't try to make it too flashy. And Roadrunners not going away. Linton on first. That's going to bring up the shortstop Cameron Robillard in the seventh hole. Well, quality, at, quality at bat by there for ball four. here in the bottom of the seventh. The Bears up 2-1 over the Roadrunners here in San Antonio. Good by Robillard. Crandall trying to use the inner half. She's painting the white. She is living in the river, not on the corner. Also up in the zone just a bit. Two balls, no strikes here on Cameron Robillard. Two balls, one strike. These teams in action over the weekend. Runners going to host Charlotte. That looks to be out of play. And Baylor is set to face the Texas Longhorns. to the curveball that Crandall's throwing out of half of the plate. Really had to make, Crandall had to make the adjustment after the two balls on the inside half. Down full on Rovalar. able to get on that will bring up Ledbetter. A slow roller to play it first. That will be out number three. And Glenn Moore, his 900th win at Baylor. 24 years at the helm. 900 wins there for the Baylor Bears. So for Ken Osterman, this is Neil Raphael bidding you good night from Roadrunner.